subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified about the highlights of India's smartest podcast, The Ranveer Show. This is TRS Clips. Blockchain is basically a technology that decentralizes. That decentralizes. So you are no longer trusting a part, uh, single entity. Right mm. now we trust banks. Mm. But we have seen what ha- happened to the banks in the past. Mm. Right? We don't have full transparency of how they operate. In a decentralized manner, you will have full visibility. The entire ledger is public. And you can trust the system more without, uh, without the need to trust a centralized party. Because mm. the system is designed in a way. Yeah, one, one second, bro. Let me just get this straight. So, hmm. say the case of a Punjab National Bank or any other bank that probably shut down. Now, if I put all my money into that Punjab National Bank and every time I was trying to make a payment using a debit card from that bank, but it's shut down. It's going through a lot of shit. Then your payment doesn't happen. Maybe you're going to say a Zara to purchase something. And I give that Punjab National Bank card or any other bank card which has kind of, it's going through a rough time. Hmm. It may not work. It may not. Because work. of their flaw. Like Punjab yes. National Bank messed up their management or that particular bank messed up their work. And then your money and your spending power gets affected. Yes. So you're saying that blockchain will remove that gap between you and Azara purchase. Yes. In order to do a transaction, you don't need a bank. You can directly transfer between two individuals. Mm. Now the money that we have, right, we trust someone that the money has value. But mm. where did it come from, right? Uh, where did the trust come from? Yeah, so where did the trust come from? Because we trust these middlemen or these brokers to build that level of trust. Just because that's how society operates. That's how society operates. Earlier, Mm -hmm. if you look at the evolution of money, uh, thousands of years back, people used to transact in gold, Mm -hmm. right? There were Mm -hmm. coins that were made out of gold. Mm -hmm. And now then, because uh, gold-based transactions are difficult to do, then we shifted to a paper money, Mm -hmm. right? Which Mm -hmm. used gold as a pegging mechanism. Mm -hmm. Now that has evolved. Like in those several years, now money is not pegged by anything, Mm -hmm. right? So tomorrow, if if a bank fails down without you, your mistake, you are getting affected. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, You know, if if you look at 2008 financial crisis, Mm -hmm. what happened? That was a mistake by some of the banks where they have given bad loans Mm -hmm. and the whole world got into recession. Mm -hmm. That should not happen. And that's where Bitcoin was born. Mm. Right, a pseudonymous name called uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. He came up with a way where how can you build a monetary system without the need to trust banks? Mm. And you are sure that if you own certain bitcoins, that completely belongs to you. Mm. It does not have uh, you know uh, need assurance from anyone else from a th- uh, centralized party. It is your own money mm. that you have full control of. Now, ten years, twenty years into the future, when Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are more common, if I want to buy your suit. I can pay you in Bitcoin and you'll be like, yeah, cool, I received it. And you'll give me your suit. Rather than you having a debit card machine, me having a debit card, putting it into your machine, like from each other's phones or from some technology, we'll be able to transact between each other. Yes, that can also happen. So there are various cases of crypto uh, assets, right? So one, for example, Bitcoin is like an asset, Mm. just like how you treat gold. Bitcoin is like that. It mm. is a store of value, mm. right? Uh, there are certain uh, currencies that the government will develop. There's something that you might have heard about CBDCs, central bank digital currencies. Now, CBDCs can replace the current uh, f- uh, financial uh, rupee, right? Mm. That can be a digital rupee which runs on top of blockchain. Mm. Now, with blockchain, you will have full transparency of how the money is being used. Mm. Let's say there is a donation, mm. right? With COVID, a mm. lot of uh, firms have raised donations. Mm. Now, if you want to see the entire ledger, how the money came, where it go, you will have full transparency transparency of the entire system. Mm. That is what blockchain provides. Got it. So again, I'll just make this even simpler for the end users. Basically, uh, I've been consuming a lot of crypto content lately. And the understanding I got about blockchain was that, um, I'm not saying the government, but higher authorities have a lot of layers. So when you are trying to say transfer money from India to Bangladesh, it has to go through many, many, many layers. Mm. But with blockchain coming in, you can skip all those layers that you're going through and just take the easy route from person A in India to person B in Bangladesh. Suppose I want to transfer money to Shake Bulasan and I'm sitting in Bombay. I'll just take Shake Bulasan's ID and say, here, take the money. We're skipping all those layers of governments, all those layers of bureaucracy. And that's possibly why governments are a little afraid of cryptocurrency. Yes, you're absolutely right. So this can be technical. In theory, it is possible. Mm. Because right? in that transfer where there is going through many layers, even those people can make profits of the money transfer that you are making. Yes. Because at its core, human beings all want money for themselves. Hmm. So you are skipping that. You're saying, no, the money transaction is between Ranveer and Shakibul Hassan in Bangladesh. Not 
all those layers of government officials and all that right so if we see how we transfer the money right mm. if i do a upi to you or if i send 1000 dollars to someone in the us it is not peer to peer there are various middlemen involved there are mm. thousands of people sitting in physical bank branches who are making the transaction happen mm. and that takes lot of time mm. that costs a lot of money mm. now with blockchain you can do all of that instantly near instantly and almost free of cost mm. so you don't need these middlemen the system is designed in a way where you can transfer value efficiently mm -hmm. right so the whole financial markets can improve can become more efficient not just efficient but far more secured and cheaper also mm -hmm. so that will save billions of dollars to the government mm -hmm.